Hey folks, today I'm going to be talking about the KEF Q6 Meta. This is a speaker that can be used as a center channel. Most likely you've seen it advertised that way. Retails for about $850 a piece. However, you can use these vertically orientated, oriented, and that way you can listen to them as a stereo set, or you can buy them as three for LCR for your home theater setup. Now, when I review most center channel speakers, I'll just be honest, most of them tend to suck. And the reason I say they suck is because they might have wide dispersion at low mid-range frequencies, but as you get to the upper mid-range, then that dispersion tends to narrow, focus more toward just one seat position. I've got a whole video about why standard or most center channel speakers suck. The exception tends to be three-way center channel designs with a dedicated mid-range and a dedicated tweeter with woofers on the side. Although there are exceptions even in that, and then coaxial designs, for the most part, are very well balanced for multi-seat listening. When you have a row or multiple seats in a row for a home theater type setup, then you want a pretty broad and even dispersion. It doesn't have to be very, very broad, but the main thing that you want is for the mid-range to tweeter area to sum acoustically at the different seated positions. So when you sit off axis, which is out of the way of the tweeter in most cases, you're sitting in a null if you're sitting too far over. Maybe 20 to 30 degrees is too far over for most MTM. And M means midwoofer, tweeter, midwoofer, or mid-range, tweeter, mid-range. It's kind of the same thing. For horizontal center channels, that's, that's never really a good thing. That's why you see most MTMs stack vertically. Or your three-way designs might have a woofer on the bottom, and two mid-ranges, and then a tweeter with the center mounted position. Uh, anyway, I've got that all covered in a separate video. If you wanna learn more about that, I really do suggest you check that out. So with this particular KEF Q6 Meta speaker, I would say that it is targeted more for the uh, entry to mid-entry level home theater enthusiasts. And the reason I say that is because this one doesn't have all of the capabilities that the R2 Meta, center channel speaker has, and nor does it, especially nor does it have the center channel capability of the reference to meta, because that's a higher line. Those speakers are more and much more money. These retail again for about 850 each. And that way you can have a good beginner to medium experience type setup. Maybe I shouldn't relate your experience to budget, but that's where I'm coming from. Hopefully it kind of gives you an idea of why I say what I say. Now, starting at the top, I will tell you flat out, if you're listening to this speaker in a large room with no sidewalls, or maybe a room that has one sidewall, but there is no sidewall on the other side, and, and you see a lot more rooms like that these days, this is not the speaker for you. And the reason I say that is because these speakers, or this particular speaker, and then the other Kef Q Meta lineup series of speakers, they all really need sidewalls. If you listen to these in a room that doesn't have sidewall reinforcement, then you are gonna hear a very, very dark sounding speaker, especially if you're coming from something like a Focal speaker or a Martin Logan speaker, or maybe a clip speaker with a more boosted top end. These speakers have a diving top end. And the reason for that is because they are expecting you to use these in a room with sidewalls. And in that case, those sidewall reflections provide additional reinforcement and they take that very sloped in-room response and they give you more top end than you would have if you didn't have the sidewall reinforcement. Some of this will make a little bit more sense in the data. So let's talk about what I heard in my listening room. I set these speakers up vertically oriented and listened to them as stereo speakers. I also did listen to one of them in center channel mode just to see what the seating range was like. As I said in the intro, the seating range for this speaker is pretty wide. So you've got a lot of room to uh, have different seating positions if you have a home theater type setup where you have multiple seat positions on a couch or maybe you have a couch against the wall over here. You've got some separation between the primary listening position and secondary and tertiary listening positions. And I cannot believe I just successfully pulled off saying the word tertiary as if I entirely knew what I was talking about. Nevertheless, this does make a very good coaxial design where you get even sound from seat to seat. So you don't have a lot of variation depending on what seat you're sitting in. That's a really good thing to have for a home theater center channel speaker. 
using these in stereo, the image and the sound stage was really nice and pretty pinpoint. The sound stage radiation was relatively wide and it's kind of about plus or minus 50 to plus or minus 60 degrees. I initially started off at about three feet from the wall and I did incrementally move these closer and closer to the wall. As expected, when I move them closer and closer to the wall, I tended to get a little bit more bass boominess. Now with equalization, you can bring this down, so that's not a problem. If you are using these without equalization, and honestly, I can't imagine that any buying the speaker, anybody buying the speaker is, but if you are, I do recommend you bring these out at least two feet from the walls. If you are using equalization, then you are probably using some AVR that has built-in EQ, like Direct Live or something of that nature, and that will help to automatically reduce some of the peaks that you're gonna get from placing the speaker too close to the wall. Uh, I consider room gain as free gain. As long as you can bring it down, you can pretty much take care of whatever else you need to. So it's not a huge issue in that regard. The space and presentation of the soundstage for a coaxial like this is really nice. Now, I'm not saying that it's as high up as some of the other speakers that I reviewed, because honestly, to do that, I would need to blind ABX test them and listen to them back to back and without knowing which one is playing. But I can say that at least on surface level, you do have a real good sense of layering and depth of soundstage and items within the soundstage. And also it sounds more spherical. And you'll hear me say that a lot in coaxial speaker reviews. Maybe that's cited bias, but I got to say that even going back 15 years or so when I was using coaxial speakers in my car, I tended to notice that was the same effect then. It just sounded like everything originated from a more broad sense rather than being strictly confined to a rectangular shaped soundstage. Now, I really like that maybe ambiguity of the soundstage localization. And I like the envelopment sense that you get from a speaker that radiates like a coaxial does, where it's just as wide on the sides as it is vertically. And that's another thing too, if you have multi-row seating for your home theater, or if you just like to get up and walk around in your room while you're listening to music, even though on the latter portion, you're probably not listening critically, it at least helps to have a similar tonal balance in your primary seating position when you're listening intently as it does when you're walking around the room and these speakers deliver that. In terms of bass output and just overall SPL levels, I put the speaker pretty much where you would expect it to be put in terms of its price. The bass capability on this speaker gets down to about 60 Hertz in room so that you could probably expect it around that region. Of course, your room, your positioning is gonna have as much of an effect as the measurements will show you, but it gives you a good idea of where you can start from. As far as the output capability of this speaker, you're looking at around maybe mid nineties before compression and distortion really start to set in. And actually when I look at it in this price range, I'd say it's competitive. So now let's talk about the data, but first we're gonna do a quick sound clip. And this is what you heard. Now, the first thing you're probably gonna notice is, well, first of all, this dip around 1K. So that's gonna make things sound maybe a little bit hollow, maybe a little bit recessed, maybe a little bit lack of attack, but normally that's gonna be in the two to 4K region or two to 3K really primarily. But the other thing that you most likely really heard is this higher frequency drop off. Now, the reason that this is dropping off is going all the way back to the beginning of the video, this speaker is expected to be used in a room with sidewalls. And when you have those sidewalls, the sound that is sent out from the side of the speaker is hitting those sidewalls and coming back to your ear. And that higher frequency is reinforced from those sidewall reflections. And therefore you don't get quite the significant dip that this alone shows you. Average sensitivity is about 85 decibels. F3 is at 61 Hertz, F10 is at 40 Hertz. So again, getting down to about 60 Hertz in room isn't really an issue for this particular speaker. If we look at the horizontal response CEA 2034 data set, this is what you've got. Look at the directivity down here, really, really good. Now this goes back to what I was saying earlier about using equalization to adjust the tonal balance of the speaker. So if you set these up in a room and you find that maybe they're not detailed enough or they don't have enough high frequency resolution, those typical terms that I hear when people are discussing 
or describing a speaker that otherwise is something that I would call bright, you can land in the middle, right? So you've got a speaker that boosts the top end a lot and reviewers are like, oh, it has high resolution and it's so detailed. Yeah, or it's just bright. Then you have a speaker like this in a large room that's gonna sound very dark and that's because of the cut and the high frequency. Or you have something that is more neutral and that I would call neutral. It's not bright and it's not dark. But if you are shooting for a speaker that has more high frequency resolution, honestly, it makes me laugh when I hear those terms uh, because I know exactly where they come from. And I wish people would just be like, the top end's boosted instead of using these stupid audio file terms to sell you and some stuff. Um, you can use equalization to boost the top end up a little bit more if you'd like to. If I flip the speaker vertically, like I listened to it in my stereo setup, this is what you get. And really, if you go back, there's practically no difference. This is the estimated in-room response at zero, 10, and 30 degrees for all sorts of positions. Basically what you see here is that no matter the angle and no matter the orientation of the speaker, you're getting pretty much the same sound. That's very impressive. Most speakers are gonna have significant dips or peaks at different angles depending on how you set them up. And in this case, you don't have that, which again leads us to understand why this is a good speaker for multi-row seating or multi-seat positioning for a home theater type setup. And I do wanna note real fast because I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but when I measured this speaker, I measured it laying flat in the horizontal position. Now, if I draw this line that indicates how I heard the speaker in my listening room, this is what you pretty much get. In-room extension to around 60 Hertz, there's a mild dip and peak combo around, what, 800 hertz to about two kilohertz or so. You might hear that. The fact that it's a dip and then a peak right after that usually signifies something to me. If it were just one or the other, it might not stand out as much. So maybe keep that in mind. Now we do have very good high frequency balance, no matter the different positions, as I said earlier, but a more extreme high frequency tilt will sound dark. So let me give you an example here. Using Kef's reference to center channel speaker, which I've reviewed recently, we can see that in blue. And if you look and you kind of line up the mid range here between the Q6 Meta in red, you can see that the reference to has a more flat ish in room response. It's still tilting down somewhat, but compared to the Q6 Meta, it's more flat. The Q6 Meta is tilting down pretty significantly. So even within the Kef sphere of sound, the Q6 Meta is gonna sound more like a darker speaker. Now, if you have a room that is very, very lively or you have glass walls or something like that, this is a case where the Q6 Meta might even be better than the Reference 2 Meta. And that's important to understand when you look at the data. Burst Decay shows a little bit of decay ringing maybe in the upper mid-range, lower mid-range area, but these are what negative 30 decibels or so down. So, I mean, that's not really a big deal. Horizontal contour plot is about plus or minus 60 degrees. So it's gonna sound nice and wide in most rooms. Note that there's a dip around four to five kilohertz. Most coaxial speakers benefit from being towed away from you, either out or in, depending on which one you prefer. If you are listening to these in a stereo setup, I would recommend towing them out, maybe past your ears behind your head, maybe about 10 degrees or so, not extreme, but just a little bit to smooth out this on axis dip right here. And then if we go to the vertical, we can see that yes, there is narrowing in the mid range area, but it's only to about maybe 50, 45 degrees. I have a whole plethora of other examples in the other video I referenced earlier, where this region right through here is significantly cut even more. So you might be 20 degrees wide at best in some of those cases. Distortion at 86 decibels and then at 96 decibels. Multitone distortion shows us a similar story here. And then if we cross this speaker over to a subwoofer and cross it at about 80 hertz, you do lose some mid-range distortion. Or in other words, your mid-range distortion improves. Quick dynamic compression sweep. This is the impedance resonance free. It does dip down to about three and a half ohm. Uh, EPDR shows one and a half ohm minimum and that's around 100 hertz. And that does it for this review. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I don't care. I'm just kidding. I just wanted to be different. Uh, yeah, for sure. Feel free to ask and I'll, I'll answer if I have the time. The other thing that I want to mention is kind of a wrap up. So the dark sounding nature of this speaker will 
definitely throw you off if you're coming from something like a Martin Logan, Eclipse, a BMW, a Focal. BMW, that was the one I was missing earlier. Uh, where those speakers typically tend to sound bright, this is not even more neutral. It's just the opposite of the way entirely. Don't use this speaker if you're going to use this in a room without sidewalls. This is better served to use in a room and a smaller to medium sized room with sidewalls. And don't forget, if you do have the speaker or you really just like the aesthetic look of it and you want to try it out, that has textbook directivity. And that means that you can EQ up the higher frequency if you want to. You can EQ just about whatever you want throughout the entire frequency range. And you can shape the speaker to sound pretty much the way you want it to. And you cannot do that with many, many other speakers, especially even in this price point. So I say give it a shot, but just keep those things in mind. And if you would like to support what I'm doing here, you can do so one of a few different ways. You can join me at patreon.com slash Aaron's Audio Corner, or you can use any of my generic affiliate links in the description section or the pinned comment below. And those can be used for anything that you want to buy from Amazon, Best Buy, Crutchfield, Audio Advice, anything. Doesn't matter what it is, just click that link. I hope that sounds as cool as I thought it did. And then go buy whatever it is you want to buy. I think you got it like 24 hours for Amazon before the cookies expire or whatever. So as long as you buy it within a day, I'll get some commission off of that. And yeah, I'd appreciate it. I will talk to y'all later. Take care. Peace.